Hi there, welcome to another SQL video. Today we are going to talk about execution time. Now if you are involved in query tuning, you know that execution time is so very critical. And when I say execution time, I mean how much time it has taken for your query to execute. Now on the face of it, <clears throat> execution time might look like a very simple metric to compute or to extract, but not really. There are some tricky things that are involved. And if you have done query tuning before, you know that when we run our query and when set statistics time is on, we can easily extract or look at the CPU time and the total elapsed time, but there's nothing called as execution time out there. Well, what am I really trying to explain? Let's jump into the demo right away and see it for yourself. Now, Management Studio is on here. I'm going to use AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. And let's turn on statistics time, which is going to give you time metrics. Here is a table, DBO transactions, and it has a few million records. I'm doing select top 1 million records from this table. Let's go and execute this. Now, when this query is executing, we always keep an eye on the execution time there on the right side. And you can say it has taken about nine seconds, 10, okay, so it took about 10 seconds. Let me zoom in here a bit and you can see now, oops, let's zoom out again and let's keep the cursor here and zoom there, there you go. So you can see about 10 seconds there and let's jump over to the messages tab and what you can see here is CPU time and elapsed time. Now. I have constantly been saying 10 seconds execution time, but this is actually not execution time. To be very precise, this is the elapsed time. Elapsed time is the time the query has taken to complete its execution from start to finish. And when I say start to finish, it also includes the time it has taken to render the data in the client tool. And remember, SQL Server Management Studio, this tool is the client tool. <clears throat> So what's CPU time? CPU time, one, two, nine, six milliseconds that you see here is the amount of time the thread has spent on CPU doing whatever it wanted to do. And elapsed time is the total amount of time from the point the request was sent till the time the last byte of data has been rendered in the client tool. So now you understand where is the execution time of the query. Now, why am I so particular about this execution time? Simply because 1 million records, right? So this data set of 1 million records was rendered in the client tool and that time is included in the elapsed time. And so many developers and DBAs, we all think that, oh, this is the execution time. The elapsed time is the execution time. Not really because 10 seconds that we see here, <clears throat> let's jump over to the messages tab. This 10, 6, 4, 5 milliseconds is the execution time, but not really. The elapsed time here could be 10 seconds, but let's say we were doing this in some other tool. It could have taken 15 seconds or it could have even taken 7 seconds. It all depends on how fast the data is being rendered in the client tool. Now, this might start ringing some bells. Think about your application, your application code. If you send this query from your client application to SQL Server and when the data is being returned back, you may not even render all the 1 million records. Maybe they are being held in a temporary object and you're doing some filtering on that and you just show a portion of it. Or you may just discard the results completely. Well, whatever the logic is, remember elapsed time is including the amount of time it is taking for the entire data to be rendered. That's where I want you to be very clear. And this is the tricky aspects with the execution time. The execution time is not very clearly visible here. So what am I trying to find out? I'm actually trying to find out, just give me the time it has taken to execute the query minus the time it has taken to render the data in the client tool. That is the tricky thing. It's not clearly visible here, uh, but I am going to use a tool called um, OStress, which is part of RML utilities to kind of just see the amount of time it has taken to execute the query without really bothering about what time it takes to render the data. So I'm going to jump over uh, to, the, to Windows Explorer. And here, if you see, there is a batch file 
call workload.cmd, which is going to call this file workload.sql. So let's go and open call workload.cmd and I'll show you that RML utilities here. Let me zoom in here as well. And this is the executable O stress, and it's it's an executable which is going to call this workload.sql file. And in this file workload.sql, I have the same query, select top 1 million records from that table uh, with just one user. And I am going to run that. Let's close this. And just to verify, let's double click workload.sql and see what code we have here. So we have the same code, right? What, what I just ran in management studio. Let's close it. And now we are going to double click on this CMD and I do that and let's see how much time it takes. There you go. This is the total execution. So we see elapsed time here, which is 1.6 seconds. Now the terminology here is elapsed time, but I think this is the execution time because the data is not being rendered. Now, isn't, isn't this interesting because this query, this workload took about 10 seconds in Management Studio. And as I said, that was the time it has taken to render the entire data. But when you execute this query using RML utility, you are just executing the query. You are not really bothered about rendering the data. And maybe the data here is just getting discarded. What's the time it has taken to execute the query? Remember, you might even consider or compare this number 1.6 seconds let's go to the management studio here and look at the cpu time the cpu time here was 1.296 milliseconds let's say this was 1.3 milliseconds and here you have 1.6 seconds this is the difference i want you to understand because 1.3 seconds here which you see this 1. Uh, uh, 1.296 uh, seconds this 1.3 seconds is the amount of time the thread has spent on CPU. But when you execute your query, when you send it to like get fired on the database engine, the thread is not instantly available. There are a lot of thing, things <clears throat> that happen even before a thread is assigned to your query. Uh, the connection object gets prepared, the session gets assigned, the session ID gets created, uh, the request goes to that session and there is a request getting created, then that request gets converted to a task and then there is a worker thread logical object which will take that request and uh, send it or uh, assign it to a particular thread and then that thread gets scheduled on a scheduler. So you can see that there's so many things happen even before the thread starts running on the scheduler, which is your logical processor. So this time, CPU time is the amount of time the thread has spent on the CPU. And I want to compute the total time it has taken for the query to execute from the point I fired till the time the execution completed, but not rendering the data. If I really want to <clears throat> bother about even rendering the data, then of course elapsed time is good for me. And sometimes elapsed time does good because not all the time when you're running these queries, you're actually rendering millions of records. For small data sets, it's just fine because elapsed time and execution time is more or less kind of same for small data sets. The things, things get trickier when uh, you are rendering a lot of data and their elapsed time goes way higher than uh, in comparison to the execution time of the query. So I hope uh, this clears off some concepts, um, CPU time, elapsed time and execution time. In our time statistics here, unfortunately, execution time is not clearly visible and that's why I just wanted to run a client application like this RML utilities just to execute the query and look at the elapsed time here, which according to me is the execution time minus the time it has taken to render the data. And note, the time you see here, of course, includes the CPU time. And also the elapsed time that you see here in Management Studio also includes the CPU time. But then we were only bothered how much time does it take for my query to execute. That is the execution time. Hope you liked the demo. See you soon. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs and a lot more. 
follow us on Twitter at the rate sequel maestros and myself a underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.